This is Mike Rougeau from Combo.com. I'm speaking with Chris Lena from Tryon Worlds. We're going to talk about End of Nations. Uh, so what do you do at Tryon Worlds? So I'm the uh, senior MMO producer at Tryon Worlds. So kind of overseeing the project with a couple other people on the Tryon side. Cool. So walk us through the, the typical day of an End of Nations player from when they log on to what they're going to be doing. Yeah, so when you first log on, you'll be looking at the War Room and give you a great overview of what's going on in the game at that moment. A lot of information about where your friends are, what's going on, what battles are happening. Maybe check out the world map, see if any particular maps are really hot, maybe a map that you like. Um, maybe then you want to hop into your headquarters where you can check out your units, make sure you have the right units for the right battle, maybe do a little manufacturing, start your day off, and then hop right in probably with friends that are already existing. Uh, already in a battle right now. Um, do a couple missions, take some objectives. So what sort of what sort of play interactions are there going to be in the interactive spaces? That's yeah, really important for us. And at its core, this is an RTS game, but we have to do the MMO elements correct. So a big part of that is having a place in the game or places in the game where players are going to see each other and meet each other. Uh, so we have a huge public maps. There's a lot of different missions going on, a lot of different objectives, vendors. So players will be interacting with each other. People, either, people that don't know each other will be running across each other, maybe grouping up to take on a boss or do a certain mission to really build those social ties that are really important in an MMO. One thing that struck me is that in the HUD, about it, it's pretty much split even 50-50. Half of it is sort of the typical MMO HUD and half of it is an RTS HUD. So would you say the rest of the game do you, is split down the middle like that? Well, like I said in the beginning, this is an RTS game at its core, and we put all those LMO, MMO elements where they make sense. So yeah, I think during combat though, you know, you're moving around your units, an RTS player will be very familiar with how they're moving their units and the strategy and tactics. An MMO player will be familiar about, you know, using some of the abilities they got through working up their class and their class talent tree, uh, and maybe some consumable items, different kinds of ammo they found. That kind of stuff will be much more familiar to an MMO player, so it's definitely a good mix. So the leveling up and the acquisition of the abilities is more familiar to an MMO player, but will those abilities still fit into it as an RTS? Oh sure, yeah, like maybe I'm uh, leading an army of tanks, right? I, I have a collection of tanks, I've chose these tanks for this particular map, um, but an MMO player, you know, maybe I have a tank power where I can briefly, you know, reduce the rate of fire but increase the damage of my tank or increase the armor for a certain amount of time, or maybe a flashbang. I shoot my flashbang and then stunning opponents. So these are things that I think familiar to both you know, tactics from an RTS game and more powers from an MMO RPG game. I think it'll be familiar to both. What do you think players should be looking forward to most? Well, I think we just have a great game. Uh, look for this game in 2011. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great game for RTS players and an MMO players. You know, it's friendly to get in, you know, it's a good learning curve, uh, and it just has a little bit of something for everyone, from PvE combat, PvP combat, you know, a, an overarching metagame. Uh, I think there's something for everyone. Well, great. This is Mike Rougeau from Combo. That was End of Nations on PC, and thank you very much. Thank you.